My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath, His covenant, His blood, support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, He then is all my hope and stay. The solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone. Faultless to stand before the throne On Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground is sinking sand Hello and welcome to Liturgy of the Word for Thursday in the second week of Lent. I'm Linda Fleming, and it's so good to be with you today. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us call to mind our sins and all of the ways, both in action and inaction, that we've sinned, in the ways we've been insensitive to those in need, and the cries of the poor. And we ask God for his mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. O God, who delight in innocence and restore it, direct the hearts of your servants to yourself, that, caught up in the fire of your spirit, we may be found steadfast in faith and effective in works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes, its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. More torturous than all else is the human heart beyond remedy. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, alone probe the mind and test the heart to reward everyone according to his ways, according to the merit of his deeds. The word of the Lord. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. He is like a tree down by the street. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. She is like a tree down by the street. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. She is like a tree down by the street. 
Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff, which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. He is like a tree down by the street. with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, there was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. And from the netherworld, where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. 
He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's gospel is all about turning a blind eye to those in need. You may have heard the parable of the rich man and Lazarus and thought the message was really for only people who had significant wealth. But I'm going to ask you to hold that thought for a moment and reconsider it. Reading this gospel immediately called to mind something I witnessed many years ago. My husband and I were visiting our son when he was attending college outside of Lancaster. And on a Saturday afternoon, we went to the vigil mass at a local church and we heard a lovely sermon and it was a very nice service. And as we exited the church, standing in the parking lot was a young family and they clearly didn't speak much English. Uh, The father of the family held up a sign that said he had lost his job and the family needed help. And I watched as the mother tended to the young children, but she made sure to profusely thank those who either gave them spare change or offered to pray for them. But the part of the story that sticks with me some eight or nine years later was the woman who exited the church in front of me. She openly scoffed at the family, and then she turned to her husband and said loud enough for me to hear, they shouldn't let people like that beg outside of our church. And she walked on by. Now, I don't know whether that woman was rich or poor or somewhere in between, but she certainly acted like the rich man in today's parable. The father of the family was a modern day Lazarus on the doorstep of the church, happily accepting any scraps, loose change, spare $1 bills that the passersby could afford. If you were a modern day Lazarus, you'd probably think you could find godly and compassionate people leaving a church. After all, they've just listened to the word of God and taken in the body and maybe the blood of Christ. But sadly, not everyone leaving the church that day was living Christ's message. We don't have to be rich to act like the rich man in today's parable. Maybe we heard Father Mark talking about the backpack project a few weeks ago that helps school children who don't have enough food for the weekend. But then we walked right by stuff the truck when they were collecting. Or maybe we know our neighbor has fallen on hard times and could use a little help, but we do nothing. Our greed, our desire to keep what we have, sometimes even just indifference, all contribute to us turning a blind eye to those in need right in our midst. Catholic humanitarian Dorothy Day said, I really only love God as much as the person I love the least. I'm going to repeat that because sometimes it takes me more than once to process it. I really only love God as much as the person I love the least. Now, I think Dorothy Day would have had some strong words for the rich man in today's gospel. And I think she'd probably also chastise those with minimal or modest means who don't give freely. Jesus tells us that we should give freely regardless of our means. In another parable, often called the parable of the widow's might, Jesus compares rich men to a widow in their giving. Many of the rich people in the temple gave large sums, 
while the widow gave two small coins, which was all she had. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury, for they have contributed from their surplus wealth, but she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. That's why I suggested earlier that this story can be applied to all people, regardless of their means. Jesus probably used the example of the rich man because it's easy to see he had the means to make a difference, but just walked by Lazarus instead. But I think it's clear that whether we're rich or poor or somewhere in between, we have an obligation to do something, not just to walk by, but to help our neighbors in need. Jesus provides a similar lesson in the story of the sheep and the goats in chapter 5 of Matthew's Gospel. When the Son of Man comes in glory and separates the people into those who will inherit the kingdom and those who will not. Jesus tells us that the sheep will inherit the kingdom because I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick, or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. This is a lesson Jesus preaches over and over we should have love and care in ourselves for our fellow humans. Will we hear him or will we walk by? Our questions for today. In what ways have I acted like the rich man and ignored need right in front of me? How can I see the face of Jesus in my neighbors who are in need? And do I give out of my surplus or do I give until it hurts? Thank you for joining us today on Liturgy of the Word. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God bless.